The early signing period is upon us. I am Justin Young, and he is Josh Tech. We're going to talk about one of the best basketball conferences we have in college. The ACC, Josh Tech, it's a new era. There's some new faces, some new bloods. Add some old bloods. Talk about John Shire right off the gate. Two out of two. The guy's killing it already on the recruiting trail. Yeah, absolutely. This 2022 class that, you know, it's currently about to take the floor at Duke was largely recruited by Shire and that staff. And then the 2023 class is, you know, this is the first full John Shire staff or uh, class. And that staff has just killed it. This is a monster, monster class. If you thought the Blue Devils were going anywhere, sorry about you. They're not. No, they're not. They're, there's no way. Like the brand equity is too strong. John Shire is a superstar already on the recruiting front. We'll see if he can coach. I think he can. Yeah. Uh, but let's dive into this class. Let's kind of walk through this class we have overall. Number one, uh, as we start the opening of the early signing period, and right off the gate, we got McKenzie Mabakbo. I always say it wrong just because I'm so excited to talk about him. Josh, help me out here. What are McKenzie the Blue Mbako. Devils? Yeah, what are, the, what are the Blue Devils getting in him? I mean, he, he's, he's a multifaceted athlete. He's big, strong, physical, athletic. He can step out, shoot the ball. He can make plays from the wing. He can play a more physical style. I think they're just going to get an all-around player who's going to be able to impact the game and kind of however, you know, they need him to. He he, were, You know, when I watch him play, he reminds me of all the things I hoped Cam Reddish would be. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, I mean yeah. that's – I'm not saying that's a slight Cam Reddish because Cam Reddish is a phenomenal player in his own right. I don't know if he picked the right um, – I hate to say that. I, if he would have gone somewhere else like Villanova or something like that, I think his trajectory would have been totally different. But with McKenzie, he reminds me of what you'd hoped that we saw from him, you know, even as a prep star playing alongside Zion and, and R.J. Barrett. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But you've got a good balance with the rest of the group. You've got Jared McCain. You've got Caleb Foster, which makes up – to me, the most dynamic backcourt we have coming into the ACC as well. We've talked about it before. Jared McCain's the type of player. Well, really, both of these guys. They both played at programs that have played just about everybody that you want to play against in high school and travel basketball. Those two guys, we've said it before, and I'll say it again. If you're a guard at Duke, that bullseye is as big as it can possibly get in college basketball. And I think both of these kids are mentally tough enough to go in there under a new regime with John Shire really trying to set his tone. Remember, he was a great guard in his own right when he played there at Duke. And so we'll be interested to see like what kind of footprint he wants to leave on his backcourt moving forward. But these two guys are two good guys to build with moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And what I really like about them is I think that they're multi-year guys. So they're not going to just be there and get in and get out. They're going to be able to be there and sustain success. Yeah, I don't know, man. The way college basketball works nowadays, you've got 600 guys that leave early for 60 spots in the hey, draft. So who knows what's possible anyway. Maybe it's just old school wishful thinking, but I'm hoping we can get these guys around for a couple of years because I think they could really develop into, you know, one of the you know nation's more formidable experienced backcourts. Well, so the backcourt's solid. Also, the front court's pretty dang good too. You got Sean Stewart and TJ Power. They round out the group. Sean Stewart's a guy that we like a lot out of the state of Florida. We've seen him at our events over the years. Um, where do you think he helps the most right out right out of the gate? I mean, just when it comes to doing the dirty work. I mean, Sean Stewart's as tough as they come. He doesn't need any kind of plays run for him. He's just going to go out there and get his own, whether it's rebounding, whether it's defense, whether it's scoring. Sean Stewart's a guy that's just going to go out there and get it done, you know, low-maintenance kind of player. And I love those guys. Duke's done a pretty good job with those guys, too. We've talked about Mark Williams, kind of took him some time to kind of – find his own route. You know, Emil Jefferson, who's on staff now, is kind of the same way. Yeah. We kind of played a lot of different roles over the course of his time. You know, Sean Stewart kind of reminds me a little bit of an old Duke player, Lance Thomas, who was there that did a really good job. They had a cup of coffee in the NBA. Really good player coming out of high school, really found a good role there at Duke. Uh, be interested in seeing a lot of people like to think that TJ Power seems to be the real sleeper of this class. I'm not sure if he can be ranked in the top – I don't know, top 50 and, and still be a sleeper. But TJ Power is the fifth guy out of this group that I think has a chance to be pretty good. So as it goes, if you talk about Duke, I feel like you almost instantly have to talk about North Carolina. We've got a new regime there, relatively new, with Hubert Davis and his staff. We've talked about them before, two-man class and Simeon Wilcherp and Zayden High. Uh, pretty good group coming into Chapel Hill as well. It's pretty good enough to be number two overall as of the today, the first day of the early signing period, that is. Uh, Zayden High, where do you think he helps the most right out of the gate? I mean, he just reminds me of one of the typical North Carolina bigs. He's going to be able to rebound, run the floor, and kind of play that North Carolina style of basketball. So I think 
you know, right away he's going to be able to help out as, you know, maybe like a secondary kind of off the bench kind of guy. But then he's going to develop into that kind of classic North Carolina player that we're used to. Yeah, just a good rim runner. And you put good guards around him. I think it's going to be pretty good. We're seeing that already at the prep school level at the AZ Compass Prep. And what a really good guard is Simeon Wilcher, bringing some Northeast flair to the table, uh, which, you know, the thing that I like about – there's a swagger if you're a North Carolina guard that just kind of plays a little differently. You got that sweet North Carolina Tar Heel blue on you. Uh, I think Simeon Wilcher comes in there and really is a big impact. Kind of reminds me a little bit uh, of – I always kind of throw it back to the old school, but Wayne Ellington is one of my favorite Tar Heels – I think Simeon Wilcher has got a chance to be very similar in that regard, too. So if that – hey, man, if he's Wayne Ellington, then you got yourself a pretty dang good player, too. So uh, just a one-man class as we move down the list is Florida State. They've got Taylor Bull Bowen. You know, we've talked about this in other pods with some staff changing going on. But we know one thing for sure. Leonard Hamilton does what? He recruits and he develops players pretty well. Taylor Bull Bowen is a player, Josh, that I think has a chance to fall in that same category, like a Patrick Williams – like uh, Devin Vassell, a guy that comes in. Well, those guys both came in with a, a little less fanfare than Taylor Bull Bowen does. But a hard-playing, high-character guy is going to do the work. Even on his own, we have him ranked number 25. Th that puts them at number three overall. Um, let me move around a little bit. We've got a new face in the ACC, and that's Kenny Payne at Louisville. What do you think his impact is going to be on the recruiting front for the Cardinals? Well, you know, before the other day, I thought it was going to be a big question mark because we didn't know what they were going to get as far as, you know, NCAA punishment yeah. and all that kind of thing goes. But, you know, we just saw that Louisville got off pretty scot-free. They got a slap on the wrist in that regard. So I think one of the reasons they brought him in was going to be because of his ability to recruit and the staff that he's, you know, he's built around him has got a lot of clout. They've got a lot of, you know, names that people know. So I think, you know, going forward, Kenny Payne and that staff is going to, you know, build a monster. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fascinated by what they can do. Like, absolutely fascinated. Yep. The bones are there, right? Like, we know that facility is unbelievable. We know those fan supports there. We go there obviously every spring. We know how much Louisville loves the Cardinal program. Uh, I mean, let's talk about this class a little bit too, if we can. Pretty good class already to kind of get things started already too. Yeah, for sure. This sets them off on the right foot. You know, they got two you know perimeter players who I think are going to be able to, you know help build the program back into that national prominence, kind of that perennial top 25 kind of team. And I don't really think that they're done yet. You know, they're still in play for a couple guys that are still on the board. Of the two guys they have, they've got Curtis Williams and Caleb Glenn. Who do you think helps them the most right out of the gate? I think Caleb Glenn is that kind of guy because he's athletic, he's physical. You know, I just, all the accolades that I just bestowed upon Sean Stewart when it comes to dirty work, when it comes to physicality, when it comes to toughness, you can apply those to Caleb Glenn too. Caleb Glenn can also step out, hit the three-pointer. He can, you know, put the ball on the floor and create from the wing as well. I think he's a really versatile piece that's going to really help rebuild this Cardinal program. I think on the complete opposite end of what we're going to see for Louisville, and I mean this in the best way, is what Mike Young does at Virginia Tech. Definitely oh, yeah. a system guy, uh, had tons of success at Walford, made a really smooth transition over to Virginia Tech. Uh, really a perfect fit out there in Blacksburg. Uh, he's got – I don't know – I. Can I go on the limb and say he has your favorite player we've ever covered at Hoopsie and coming to town? Probably, yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, you know, I'm a B Rock kind of guy, Brandon Rexdiner over at Etowah High School. You know, we, we got to see him probably more than anybody else. And I've seen him so much throughout high school. I got to see his rise from a player that was, you know, projected to be mid major to a guy that's now going to Virginia Tech and the ACC. You even, I remember this like clear as day. I remember you telling, we had a meeting one time. We have a ton of meetings behind the scenes and really talking about players, guys we need to watch. You're like, JY, I'm telling you, this guy at Etowah has got a chance to really be a riser. I mean, you were so far ahead of the game on uh, Brandon Recksteiner. We certainly saw that with the Atlanta All-Stars, our MVP of the Hoopsing Association this year. Pairing him up, though, with Jaden Young out of Greensboro, uh, North Carolina, a recruiting hotbed that never seems to like run out of talent there at uh, – in, in Greensboro, Jaden Young, I think him and Brandon Rexner are going to be a really fun duo to watch, especially under the, the helm of, of Mike Young, what they do, uh, what they've always done, really. They do a ter terrific, terrific job. Um, speaking of terrific, terrific jobs, I'm, we've been talking all day. We've been recording tons of stuff. So if I sound like I'm slurring my speech, it is because I have no more voice left in me. So just kind of rock with me, people. Rock with me. Uh, but it's Virginia. Virginia's got, as always, they know who they are. They know what they need to do to get, you know, the right types of players in their system. And they, I feel like they almost never fail with recruiting. They identify so good. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, Tony Bennett and that staff just crush it. And I think, you know, both you and I think they have a sleeper coming in in Blake Buchanan. You got to see him first before I did. What did you see out of him early? Yeah, it's funny, man. So uh, so I think he really blew up at Section 7. So I watched a ton of film out of him. Like, I'm fascinated by the state of Idaho <laughs> and the budding hotbed that it is. And, and truthfully, like, the city of Boise, not Blake Buchanan is actually from Coeur d'Alene, a really beautiful part of the country. But I think Boise is going to be a town that I think we're going to start to see more and more players come out of down the road as more people leave California, get out of more expensive real estate. Boise is on the come up. I'm telling you, man, that's where we're going to find some players in the next couple of years. I like it over there. I got family in Boise. Do you really? Yeah. My, if you've listened to our Pac-12 uh, pod, you got to hear me talk about my cousin who's a swimmer at Stanford. He's from Boise. No kidding. Well, look, see, I told you, man, it's on the come up. It's on the there come up. But getting back to the story of Blake Buchanan, I did text one of their assistant coaches as he was on his way. He wasn't there yet at Section 7 in June during the Scholastic Life period. And I said, hey, listen, man, they had him on campus. They were so far ahead of the game. They got him to campus to leave Idaho, come all the way out to Charlottesville. There was a connection there because of Tony Bennett's time as a head coach of Washington State. He was aware of like certain players. So there was a connection there because that, you know, Idaho to Charlottesville connection doesn't happen very often, right? I text him. I said, hey, man, your guy is blowing up. Like the entire Pac-12 were sending head coaches out to watch Blake Buchanan, who was absolutely killing it. I love him. I think he's a terrific player. I think he's going to be so perfect for what Virginia does. He doesn't need to be in an up-and-down system. He can play a slow style of game. Back-to-the-basket guy, kind of a throwback guy, a really good passer, very highly skilled. I like him so much that I've got him ranked number 54 overall in the country. People think I'm crazy. I don't think I'm crazy. I think I'm spot on. We had Jay Huff. Believe it or not, when Corey Evans worked for us at Hoopsie.com, we had Jay Huff in our top 25 because we really thought that he would be a pro-level player, which now he is. He's playing overseas. But uh, we really we, we were pretty bullish on that ranking, and I feel pretty strongly about Blake Buchanan as well. Are there any other sleepers for you, Josh, when you look at the ACC? I'm going to put you on the spot here. Any sleepers, yeah. deep-cut guys that you really like in this league? I can guarantee that there are. Let me try and pull up my trusty little list here. Um. While I look, do you do you have any off the top of your head? I do. Yeah, I do. I, I actually really like the two-man class that Earl Grant has coming wow. to Boston College. Did I steal I, yours? Yeah, I knew we were going to – I knew – as soon as I asked you, I was like, oh, we're going in the same spot. Because <laughs> we're going yeah, down to Florida. That just means we're right. Yeah. Jaden Hastings, I think, to me, is criminally undervalued across the country. Yeah. Um, he's out of Florida. I've seen him come up since – I saw his very first game, his action as a freshman – Physically, he's a beast. He's going to be the best incoming shot blocker in the league. Uh, I think Boston College, no doubt about it, is the hardest job in the conference. Uh, I think you're always fighting against so much outside stuff. So to go to two places, he went to Florida and got Jaden Hastings, okay? And you got Fred Payne down in Louisiana, okay? So you get two deep-cut Southern guys that are going to come into Boston College, going to bring a whole different style of play. I love Earl Grant as a human being. I think he's awesome. I think he's a great coach. I think he's a great recruiter. I think these are two guys that he deserves, honestly, that he deserves to have in Chestnut Hill. I think Jaden Hastings is going to be very, very good. So good, in fact, that I think he's going to be a player, if he stays the course in college, could be a player that we see get drafted in the NBA because of his size, his shot blocking ability. Uh, I mean, listen, I've seen worse players make the NBA, okay? Definitely. So Jaden Hastings, to me, is a player that's a deep-cut guy that I really like, and I think they need to be commended for landing such a good player. Yeah, absolutely. We, we've loved Jaden uh, Jaden Hastings for a while. We got to see him a lot when he, he, he was uh, coming out of Florida. You know, they would come up here and play in Georgia events all the time, so I got you know pretty familiar with him there. So that was a guy that I really liked. And then a guy that I liked that, you know, but I hadn't seen a ton of before I went to the NBPA Top 100 camp in Orlando, but Blue Kane going to Georgia Tech, he had one of the most impressive – performances of the entire weekend there and it was one of those things where was, if he wasn't committed to georgia tech already he would have been the stock riser of that event i really think that he's going to provide a lot of impact for josh passer and the yellow jackets isn't that funny right isn't that the way it goes in recruiting sometimes sometimes if you commit so early in your process your value almost gets overlooked he's like oh he's already committed yeah you know it, it's amazing how that happens and, and i think that happens way more than we give it credit for where guys maybe get underranked or undervaluated because they're already headed to a school. There's already so many other guys to go watch. I like that thought a lot, and I've heard nothing but good things from the Georgia Tech staff about Blue Kane and how he can come in and how he can help. You know, to your point, Josh Pastor and his staff, I think, have overachieved since he got there to downtown. 
Uh, I think they've overcome quite a bit, and I think that they've actually done a pretty admirable job. And they've and they've been better than what their roster provides. I think. Does that make sense? No, it it, it absolutely does. Now, yeah, it's a tough job down there, and you know if they built a winner and they won the ACC tournament. I mean, it was a different kind of setup, but they still won it. Um, and can I, can I throw another name at you that I just love this fit? Throw it away. Yeah. Brady Dunlap and Notre Dame. Oh, you just read my mind. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny you say him. So, like, there's an interesting take. A lot of people on the West Coast have a mix, mixed opinions of, of who he is. I really like him a lot. He's a coach's son. He's played in the South. He's played in the West. He's, he's just got a lot of – he's picked up a lot of different types of basketball along the way being a college coach's son, okay? He's grown up in the gym. He's grown up in practices. He understands culture in locker rooms. He understands the work that needs to be done. And then when you look at Notre Dame, I actually was talking to somebody about this at the Border League. I said, listen – He's going to a place that have done really good things with players like him in the past. Yeah. He can shoot. He can rebound. You know, people are projecting to be a four man. I'm like, I, I just don't see it, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I just think he's way better than he gets credit for, particularly in the West. And the fact that he's going to go play for Mike Bray, who's done really good things with other players like him before. I, I, I think it's a fantastic fit for both parties. Yeah. That's just one where, you know, it just like when the, when the marriage happened, you're like, oh yeah, duh, that's a no brainer. Yeah, no doubt. Parker Fredrickson also is going to be on board there. Marcus Burton, a really good, actually a pretty good class. Uh, Notre Dame. There's so many groups. There's so many teams within the league that are all kind of stacked up in the middle right now within the ACC. I don't know. You, you brought this up off off camera. I don't know if there's a lot of pop with this group overall from top to bottom in the league. Yeah. But there's going to be somebody, as we see this every single year within this league, this league is such a gauntlet that somebody's going to rise up and be that guy. That might be Jalen Lowe at Pittsburgh. That might be um, – oh, who did, who did Wake Forest get? Aaron Clark, he might be that guy. You know, Asa Thomas going to Clemson might be that guy. There's always somebody that's a deep-cut guy that way overperforms his high school ranking. So there's a lot of there's a lot of intrigue there, I think, with the conference as well. I want to bring up one more guy, Michael Nowako going to Miami. Big physical, 6'9", like 260, like bouncer tough. Uh, I actually really like him a lot. He'll be the enforcer. Jaden Hastings is the best shot blocker coming into the league. Zayden High is probably the best overall big coming into the league. But I think Michael Nowako is going to really add some pop there uh, to the Hurricanes lineup. So any uh, any last thoughts for you on the ACC, Josh, as we wrap this up? Yeah, it's just – it's a conference It's a conference that I feel like has been in flux in terms of recruiting lately. Like the ACC has got, you know, perennially – it was the conference that got the best recruits right now. Yeah. It kind of has, you know, it's been in a little bit of a lull because it, you know, it hasn't like some of those top programs. Louisville hasn't recruited at its best. You know, Virginia's kind of taken a step back from where they were. Syracuse kind of has been up in the air, but I think, you know, within the next couple of years, we're going to see it rise back up with Kenny Payne and with, you know, the league building up some more cloud behind it. Oh, we'll see what happens. I'm definitely interested to see what happens in North Carolina, honestly, like to me, like that's, that's where it is. I feel like Hubert Davis has to be able to go out there and get himself a top 10 guy like we've seen North Carolina do over the years. He's getting close, definitely there. Uh, but to me, that's a big one that we're watching forward. So anyways, nevertheless, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got tons of videos coming out. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and do all the things people ask you to go do on these uh, things. Uh, if you're not a subscriber already to hoopscene.com, we ask that you go do so. Uh, we've got great coverage in the Carolinas. We've got great coverage in Georgia, down in Florida, Alabama, Tennessee course out here on the west uh, we've got you covered from top to bottom get exclusive rankings notebooks and all the things that you want to know about to be a true insider in high school hoops we appreciate you watching we'll see what happens in the acc and when it does we'll have you covered only on hoopscene.com